let's move on to our third speaker, uh, Manu uh, Mukherjee, and he'll tell us about his journey into astrophotography. Go ahead, Manu. Hello, uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, my name is Manu, and I'm coming to you from uh, Toronto, Ontario, uh, just on the border of Toronto and Scarborough. Uh, so fairly like polluted backyard skies. Uh, I just wanted to uh, present uh, how uh, I ended up in this deep rabbit hole called astrophotography. So I'm Manu. I'm very socially awkward, and I'm fascinated by shiny things. And now uh, foolishly thought that the pandemic was coming to an end, so I shaved off my pandemic beard. Um, what do I like to do? I like taking pictures, uh, mostly landscapes, uh, sometimes buildings, um, but almost never people uh, other than uh, my family. Uh, so what got me into astrophotography? A short answer is YouTube. Uh, just started watching uh, tons of videos of people doing these amazing um, uh, travel uh, vlogs of going to distant places, looking at uh, um, uh, you know the Milky Way core. I'm like, wow, is that something I can do? Uh, the short answer I'll get to in a second. Um, the 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 longer explanation is I was always interested in stars, but my early experiments, as I mentioned, were a bit underwhelming. Um, also. Uh, I mean, uh, tying back to what Claudia was mentioning in the previous uh, presentation, uh, time or, or lack thereof. I, you know, there is something to be said about sitting in your couch and having your telescope be operated uh, remotely, as opposed to actually going out, setting up in the middle of the night in an unknown location. Um, it's, a, it's a bit too much. Also, this hobby is not cheap. Uh, so I did what, what most people do when they start into it, I gave up, uh, but then 2020 happened. Uh, found myself stuck at home. Uh, uh, my kids and my wife suddenly were not that interested in me sticking a camera in their faces every few minutes. Uh, surprisingly, the dogs were very unconcerned uh, when I started doing that. So I started pointing the camera up uh, at uh, uh, at the skies from my backyard. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm in a portal seven zone, so it's fairly light polluted. And with my naked eye, I could maybe catch five stars uh, in, in major constellations like Orion, maybe. But but the camera sensor was just amazing. It's, uh, suddenly, I started ca catching photons that have been traveling millions of light years, and I had no idea I could even do that from my own backyard. Um, so I started going down the rabbit hole. Uh, I started to research how to take better pictures with my existing equipment. Um, I started to play with Photoshop, uh, Deep Sky Stacker, Sequator. And then a comet appeared. Uh, uh, this was a uh, comet Neowise from, um, uh, from fairly close to here, um, uh, in, in, in just, just north of Markham. I, I managed to find a golf. Uh, course, uh, and I just set up the camera and just started taking pictures. And and because I was cooped up and uh, Ontario started opening up a little bit in the summer, I went uh, on a camping trip and by pure luck, uh, managed to capture a, the wide field image of the Milky Way core. I was very excited. Um, but this was it. I'd, I'd made it. I was, I was, I was an astrophotographer. I've, I've done it. There's nothing else I can Nothing else to learn is that I could probably sell um, uh, all of this uh, equipment and images. I could make literally dozens of dollars back. Uh, no. Uh, it, I started, as I mentioned, started going deeper into the rabbit hole and uh, started looking at uh, deep sky imaging. Uh, and again, YouTube is a very, uh, very conducive to going down this rabbit hole. Um, so I did what almost every beginner does is I pointed a camera lens and uh, a DSLR um, on uh, to, to Orion. Um, and this was my first attempt. Uh, this was my first attempt at capturing anything outside of the moon or, or, or landscape or with, with, with the night sky showing. And I was, I was, 
I was blown away. I, I, I could I could see a nebula from a backyard in a light polluted city. But then what else could I do? Well, this was with a, a 200 millimeter uh, lens. So I said, okay, what if I plonk on a bigger lens on there? What happens then? I, I started getting closer, but I also noticed that if I, if I kept the exposure long, everything quickly fell apart. So I started taking shorter exposures, but I had no idea uh, what I was doing still. But a little bit of improvement. Um, I, I started seeing it a bit bigger in screen. Okay, what else can I do? So I, um, uh, I this was shot in December of last year. And between the previous image and this one, I discovered the wonderful world of uh, equatorial mounts. Um, and, and I went out and bought myself a, a small refractor telescope. Uh, after having to figure out what back focus was, uh, how to mount it, how to control it, um, I managed to take this image of uh, the Orion Nebula. Um, and I was really stunned. I, 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 this was the, the proper taste of what could be done. Uh, now, this was taken with no light pollution filters. This was just... Uh, 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 between the previous image and this image, I had to teach myself what stacking was, how you can stretch an image, um, but I still hadn't gone further uh, deeper into the hole. Uh, and then this was uh, last month, um, October of, not last month, a couple of months ago actually now. Um, and I just wanted to compare within one year, had I, had I made any improvements in this hobby? Um, and suddenly I could, I could, there was visual proof that I had made improvements within a year uh, that I did not think I was making when I was reprocessing the same images over and over again. Uh, and am I still doing this? Yeah, I, I, I love this target. It is genuinely a, a fun target to shoot. It's very easy to find. Uh, at this point in time, uh, I have... <laughs> I've sold the, the, the youth mount that I got, got a second mount, got a dedicated astronomy camera, put a couple of, uh, put a, a light pollution filter in there, guiding ASI Air Pro to, to, to uh, acquire the, the, the images and then uh, picks inside to edit. So it, it quickly went, uh, the, the learning curve was steep, um, but, but the rewards were quite, uh, lovely to look at. So what was this trip like? Well, as I mentioned, I started with a basic tripod and an intervalometer. Um, I was learning about star trails and stacking. Uh, I wanted to do that, that uh, you know, the, the, uh, the nightscape with the foreground with, uh, with the, uh, the earth spinning around the, the northern celestial pole. Uh, then I'm like, okay, well, I want to capture uh, the, the, the white field. So uh, can I do do long exposure? But you can, but you can't do it too long or else you get star trails, which is what I'm trying to avoid now. So, okay, I tried to uh, uh, to learn stacking, what that meant, um, and how it was different, to, similar to what I'd learned with star trails, but also different somehow. Um, then that led into the next uh, period where it was long exposures with a star tracker learning uh, stacking and, and blending two different images, one for the foreground and one for the background. And then then it started, the, 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 the drop-off started to happen steeply. Long exposure with an equatorial mount, figuring out acquisition software. Again, this is there's a very clear memory in my brain of, in February of, uh, of uh, last year where nothing was working. Everything that could break was breaking. Uh, my fingers were frozen, my toes were frozen. I had this vivid image of just taking everything, just tossing it into the bin and just saying, I'm done with this hobby. Um, I also learned a lot of new words. Uh, acquisition software itself is one of them. Um, so after after I threw my tantrum, I, I had to learn Pixinsight, which is a very powerful um, 
astro editing software effectively. Uh, and I, I don't know uh, if you've ever used it, but it is incredibly intimidating and, and completely non-intuitive. So uh, following my previous trend, I gave up on it almost immediately. Um, I then started taking long exposures with a dedicated astronomy camera uh, and quickly discovered that um, if I wanted to do this, I had to kind of give up any hopes, dreams, aspirations I had of uh, ever seeing anybody outside of my family in the evening time. Um, and then had to go crawling back to Pix and Sight and had to keep learning. Uh, but, but here's the thing, it's a very isolating hobby. Um, as I mentioned, I, I shoot from my backyard, I had no idea where to go. And by complete um, uh, happenstance, I stumbled across uh, uh, Rask and Rask Toronto Center's Instagram pages. Uh, and, and after dithering for about one month, I, 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 I joined uh, uh, the society and I finally started breathing because I realized I wasn't the only person who was, uh, who was spending countless evenings, every clear evening outside, um, uh, just looking up at the stars. Uh, so what's next for me? What's next in 2022? So I'm hoping to, uh, in the spring, to attempt a wide field uh, Milky Way panorama, something I've never done. Um, hoping that um, that things get better and we can start meeting again so we can get out there doing some uh, uh, during the star party and, and actually complete a panorama. Um, and in the summer, I want to capture more data on the North American nebula. I want to create a mosaic of Kirkham Solar Nebula. And I'm going, I, I want to, hopefully, if uh, everything works out well, to try and make more trips out uh, to the to the Observatory. Um, I think that's it for me. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm hoping that this was uh, a little bit entertaining uh, and, and informative. And, uh, uh, and I just want to say, if there are any questions, happy to take them. Um, but if not, over to you, Paul. Great. Thank you so much, Manu, for sharing uh, your experiences with us so far. And hopefully, uh, we'll have you back uh, in a few months. You can show us some more results. Love to. <laughs> Emma, do we have any questions from Manu? Um, we didn't get any questions, but we got one joke. What happened to all your money? Um, and the response is <laughs> astrophotography ate it. There was another joke that I heard, which is uh, how, to, uh, how to make sure your kids never get into drugs. It's easy. Just get them into astrophotography. They'll have no money. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you so much. Uh, hi, Manu. I have a question. I may have missed it. Uh, where are you shooting from? I'm shooting from my backyard in Scarborough, uh, Toronto, Scarborough, Ontario. Yeah, in the thick of light pollution, unfortunately, <laughs> just like uh, most of us. <laughs> yeah. All right, very good. Thanks again, Manu. Um, we actually got a question. Oh, okay. um, What camera did you start with and what do you have now? Oh, uh, I started with a Nikon D780. Um, sure, that's not true. I started with a Nikon D750, uh, but I sold that because I bought the Nikon D780. And then I moved to uh, a one-shot color dedicated astronomy camera, the ZWO uh, ASI 533MC Pro. These names are just a roll off the tongue. Uh, but, but that's my current camera uh, that I'm shooting with. Great. Thank you so much. Very good.